to another vlog. So today we take on Haven and Waterlooville away from home. Um, and what is going to be a tough game, you know, you can't under underestimate anybody at this stage of the season. And when you come up against opponents, uh, no matter who they are, most more than likely they've got something still to play for. You know, in this case, we are both fighting for uh, certain different things, but we're both fighting at the end of the day for three points. Um, haven't to try and avoid the drop and us to try and get up and get into first place to win the league. But because of that divide in, in terms of what we're going for doesn't mean that because we're going for something better that we're going to necessarily come out better because it is going to be a tough game. You, like I say, you know they're going to be scrapping for points. They're going to make it difficult as well. Um, and, and no team in this league is getting beaten every single week. Um, the, the, even Braintree at the bottom it isn't happening. So teams aren't getting beaten every single week and teams are picking up results now and getting even teams like this and they will continue to do so more often now it's crunch time. But yeah, I'm, I'm seeing this one as a potential banana skin, um, but I'm trying to be positive. So team news or anything like that, I'm not sure. I think Dayton um, could potentially be back. I think I heard that he may be in the squad, but if not, he's likely to be back in the next couple of weeks or next game or so. But uh, Marvin Ekpatera sustained a broken nose, as I told you last week, um, after reappearing, after being out uh, for some time with injury away at Brackley Town. And uh, yeah, he's picked up a broken nose, so I doubt he'll be in the, in the squad today. Um, Josh Colson came on last week. I think he's ready, so he probably it wouldn't surprise me if you see him in the starting 11. Um, I think Josh Cromer has still got a couple of games to go, but I think he's back in training now, uh, full training. So we're starting to get our players back slowly at this vital stage of the season, which is very important for us. Um, my score prediction today, I'm going to say I always go for an Orient win, but I feel like a draw. But I'm going to stick to an Orient win. I'm going to say 2-1 to Orient. Um, I got it right last week with 2-1, so I might as well go with the same thing again. Um, but yeah, let's get down to heaven, and uh, I'll see you there. Up the O's. One of the players went down from a high boot from the link. He didn't look that bad at the time, but probably is because he's made the change. One, One. what's the bounce? Well done, Clay. Well played, Clay. Has scored one of the best goals I have ever seen live. Like when I can't even tell you, I'm, I can't do it any justice. Right, but that is one of the best goals I've ever seen live. That is a, that was an absolute well -made. and out of nothing as well. Oh, searching for that second goal to make us more comfortable. Goal kick. Jesus Christ, the rest of the minutes I did on here. There was quite a long injury when the, um, uh, the player that linked high footed went off half time 1 0. Um, performance wise, it hasn't been the best. I mean, we haven't played amazingly well. 
the goal was kind of out of nothing, quite an even game really, so to be going in at 1-0 is, is good. Um, I still expect to see a little bit more from us in the second half. Um, yeah, so far I ain't too bad, I mean, we haven't played the game, but we are still 1-0 up at the end of the day and uh, in the second half, you know, we've got ourselves to change the game like they did last week and hopefully we can get another goal or two and try and make sure that we got to make sure we get that next goal if there is another goal because otherwise it is going to be hard to re, re pick ourselves up after uh, if not equalised. So I'm still confident going into the second half. Because yeah. York rang out a nice kick. I saw that, yeah. 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 It's nice. Come on, Lauren! Come on, Lauren! You know, York would do, Orient would do exactly the same thing as York done. Come on, Come on, Riff. Go! Oh. Oh. Go and shoot, it's it. Oh my god! Oh! oh unlucky. Almost there you go. That's not a bad ball. Oh! oh. oh. Well done. Well done, Mark. Well done, Mark. Oh. That's it. Oh, corner. Come on. Another good ball. Oh! Oh! Unlucky. 1-1, one, one, uh, terrible defending and another great goal in this game. A great goal in this game as well. That is so frustrating. So frustrating, Orin. Not a good ball. Such a poor ball. The line is far too high. I've got to win that. Yes, go on, on chase on, it, that ain't going out. That's all right. Come on. Come on, Ryan. Drew almost adding another one to Italian, another great goal, and hit the bar from outside the box. Proper fun to it. Pressure piling. Oh, that's a talent from Yes, Evan! Come on! Come on! Simpson off, Harold on. Another mediocre performance from Simpson, but. It doesn't really matter. Drew coming up and uh, Charlie Lee coming on. Great performance from that man. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And one of the best goals I've ever seen live as well. Unlucky not to get two. Harbour, oh, nice. Run the cup down a little bit. Long throwing coming in. Coulson's gone up. Come on, Coulson. Oh, come on, really? He's well over him. Take him on. Drill it. Nice corner, that's what he wanted. Come on, boys. Come on, man. Go on, Charlie. Oh, Mackinac. Oh, Mackinac at the corner. Six minutes again in this half, so they've been 12 minutes of added time in total. Nice. Oh, brilliant. Go on, go on. Let's go, man. Oh, no, it just didn't fall in the right position. Don't lose it, whatever you do. Ling, Ling, Ling. Get across. Oh, oh, leave, leave, it, leave, it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Come on. Come on, big three points. Wrexham won in the end. Fold won in the end. Massive three points. Farrow away Tuesday night. All to play for still. As you can see, I'm now back from the game. Um, I'm going to talk to you in step by step uh, my opinions on what's happened so um, first half I think we came out quite strong to be fair um, it, it wasn't the best football that was we could play but then again I'll reiterate the fact that the pitch was really not good it kept cutting up all the time um, and it was really bobbly so you can't 
we couldn't play the football that we like to play, which is on the ground, quite neat and tidy, quite quick pace. It just wouldn't, you wouldn't be allowed to play that football really on that kind of pitch. So we had to um, mix it up a little bit um, and adapt to the playing surface, uh, which as professional footballers they should do and they should know how to do. And in the end, obviously, they did do it quite well. Um, and, you know, up until Maguire Drew's goal, there was not really any sort of clear cut chances in the game. Um, and that Maguire Drew goal just came out of absolutely nowhere. But I say in all my time watching Orient, which is since I can remember, like it being, I started going over Orient when I was a baby. So ever since then, I cannot remember seeing a much better goal than that. That actually was one of the best goals I think I've ever seen at a live game. Um, the technique, just to, I can't quite remember if it was a full volley or a half volley, but either way, either one, the technique on it, from 30, 30 yards out, 30, like 35 yards out, 40 yards out, whatever, um, and to just loft it over the goalkeeper when he's not even completely central, he's more to the right, uh, right wing, and the kick. The keeper, would just, he did not expect it. It kind of reminded me of um, Alex Ravel's goal in the player final against us uh, a few years back. Um, but this time it obviously was a goal like that that went in our favour. But out of absolutely no, nowhere that came. Um, I'm sure a few people would have missed that goal as well, probably just talking because it wasn't that great at that point. And then just out of nowhere, just he takes the shot. You know, to even have the audacity to do that from that distance is, I think, tells you a lot about him. Um, the last two games, he has made a massive, massive impact um, and has really inspired us to get our two wins. Um, but moving on from that point onwards, we should have uh, probably got a second goal um, and we looked like we were going to um, and we finished the half quite strong. So that was encouraging. Um, but then first half, um, first period of the second half, as you would expect, you know, they're 1-0 down, they're fighting to stay up, they're fighting for survival, they need the points as much as us, but like I say, for a different reason, their manager would have got into them and would have told them to just try and get at us, and they did for a little bit, um, they had a couple of chances, um, but didn't make any, make anything of it, and then uh, the game kind of levelled off, we found our feet, and then again, they had a little... Um, Breakaway and nice bit of play, and their lads just scored an absolute screamer as well. I see on Twitter he posted that he's n he's never going to score a goal like that ever again, especially on his left foot. Um, but that was a fantastic goal as well. You got to give it to him uh, and to them that to make that one all was a brilliant goal. Um, nothing Brill could do. I'd, I'd say it was poor defending though, because I think if you look at him having them uh, space in that position to get his shot away. Uh, leading up to that, he probably, the, the build up could have been stopped. So that's my only criticism of that. I think the defense probably could have stopped it leading up to it, but it is what it is. And um, that's gone in the back of the net. And then at that point, I just think, let's just, I, I, I was so frustrated. I think, please don't collapse. Just please, please don't collapse now. You know, cause you could, the way we were not playing in this game, but as in playing, Recently, you could see us just them going on and ended up winning the game, if you know what I mean. And then, uh, actually, to be fair, we responded very well from that. And not that long after, we did um, regain the lead through uh, Josh Colson's header. And by the way, that was a fantastic header because he had to flick it on near post and get it right over the keeper from a tight angle as well. He, he was almost near, um, well, he was almost basically on the, on the byline. So. Uh, that was a fantastic header as well and all three goals in the game were great goals um, which is unlike or in this season uh, when you look at our games we don't tend to score amazing goals um, but or have games with amazing goals and this game had it all really um, and then from that point onward when it was 2-1 there's still a little bit of time left um, both teams going at it a bit we're going at it to get the third they're going at it to try and equalise and rescue uh, a point. Um, Matt Harold came on and he kind of changed the dynamics of the game a little bit and I thought he held up the ball very well. Um, I thought Simpson didn't have a great game. I know 
I know people will be getting on his back a little bit, and I've seen it already, but if you think about it, the guy hasn't played in five months. He hasn't played since October when his season in MLS finished. Um, and you can't expect him to come in straight away and, and, and score a, a goal a game or whatever. He's going to need to adjust to the league, uh, adjust to being back in football and adjust to you know, uh, being in amongst the team that we have. So uh, for me, I know the, the, the stature or, um, of him and the player and the name he, uh, he is with Jay Simpson that the longer it goes on, the more questions will be asked. But I just think give it a couple of games, I think you'll see, you'll see it work. Um, but yeah, like I say, that point, both teams kind of going at it a little bit, uh, asked to get the killer goal for the third and then them to try and um, rescue a point and they almost did in the 93rd minute or something crazy. Um, it did go in the back of our net, uh, but Real was uh, deemed to be fouled by the referee. I could not see it. It was a massive scramble. I think it was from a corner. All their players went up, their keeper was up there. Uh, it went it across the line. I heard them cheering their fans, and I was like, oh, I just think, oh, for God's sake! Like, and then uh, the ref just held it up a bit, like refs do. Um, and then it was kind of confusion, what was going on? And then, thankfully, he blew blew up and uh, gave it as a foul for us um, on against Brill. So I'll have to see that on the highlights um, that Orient produce tomorrow. But at the end of the day, you know, we came in to get a job done to get the three points. We did, the condition, like the playing surface weren't great, couldn't probably properly play our football. Um, so did was it a, the best of performances? No, but it was better than what it has been recently. Um, that's encouraging. Uh, we need that going into the games we've got coming up. Um, but look, at the end of the day, this is always gonna be a potentially hard game with the fact that they're playing to survive uh, at this stage of the season. and for us to uh, try and win the title but you know it doesn't matter how you play necessarily at the minute in this stage of the season it's just matters about picking up results getting the points and we did um, and it was better than what it's been in recent weeks so yeah I'm happy with the result um, we had to win out today otherwise I think that would have been us gone out of the title race because Wrexham won um, Fylde won Sully won so everybody at the top won tonight uh, today even um, but coming up Tuesday night, we've got one of our game in hands away to Barrow. I unfortunately can't go. I've got college on that day. Um, my mum and dad work during the day, and my dad works night, so that's a no-no. Uh, my uncle Ross is going, so um, safe journey to him as well. Um, safe journey to all the own fans going up there, because that's one hell of a journey. Uh, I did it last season, um, and I like the, the ground as well. Um, but yeah, safe journey to all the own fans going up to Barrow. You're legends um hopefully we can get something in midweek because we kind of need to and if we do i think that will could that will move us up to second if we get three points um and then on saturday it's the big one it's the um clash of the dragons it's us versus wrexham at brisbane road and that is going to be one of the biggest games that you will see probably the biggest game on my channel and the biggest game that we've had at brisbane road for many many years um and I can't tell you how massive that game is going to be. I'm already nervous. I'm already at the, at the thought of it. But yeah, I know this is another long outro. It's what, almost 10 minutes, but I always feel like I have a lot to, to say because I love to really get into the uh, depth of, of the game and get my teeth into it and, and analyze and analyze it. Uh, there we go. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Actually, I'll just say again, I've got to score my score prediction right again two weeks in a row. This is not broken. Uh, don't change it. So, and I didn't. 2 1, twice in a row. It's happened, mate. Next week or Tuesday night, just put your money on 2 1. <laughs> but yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you uh, next week at the big one. Home to Wrexham. Up the O's.